three nights, 6,000 volunteers over 4,000 square miles, taking the Los Angeles homeless count. There's a lot to talk about, and I'm delighted to be joined today by the CEO of the Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority, otherwise known as LASA, Dr. Valicia adams Kellum. So great to have you here. It was a little disconcerting and a little shocking to see the numbers. Up 10% in the city, 9% in the county. You know, this is really the first time that you've been in the office to be able to grab these numbers, see what it means. What did it say to you when you saw it? Well, thank you so much for having me, first of all. And it was really hard for all of us to see those numbers. They were shocking. They're deeply alarming. And we have a lot of work to do here in Los Angeles. And I think while this is a time of great concern, never before have we seen the level of potential collaboration between Mayor Bass and the city and the Board of Supervisors at the county. Let's get to work. Absolutely. And me at LASA, ready to continue to lock arms and elevate our partnership. What is going into place to make that cooperative effort work? Well, I think the most important first step was that the mayor called a state of emergency day one of her administration, followed by the state of emergency called by the Board of Supervisors. We must speed up the, the process of moving people from encampments into housing, and we must remove all barriers and red tape. We're already seeing less days from an encampment to permanency than we've seen in the past. That trend is very encouraging. And you have the city and county making sure that the providers are aligned and have the resources they need. Say there's 25 encampments and there's a person that's going to be leading the effort. They're going to be out there understanding there's 25, there's 30 encampments. What's the array of issues? Ah, we need mental health here. We need folks with drug and alcohol background training. We need someone with lived experience or an army of folks with lived experience. Uh, we want to have maybe security personnel there and oftentimes LAPD is on call, maybe not on site, but on call. Sanitation services are going to be there as well. And, and all of these entities meeting at the same time every day, pointing out where we're gonna go. That's how the mayor was able to get over a thousand people housed in her first hundred days. Our goal is to get to two and 300 people a week. Have you seen and are you seeing progress in this cooperation? We are seeing results. People are responding. People in encampments want to be indoors. For the mayor again to bring over a thousand people in and 80% success rate, meaning we bring people in and they stay in. It means the service providers are doing a great job making people feel good and settled and giving them the resources that they need to move along. We also measure our success by how long does it take to move a person from an encampment into permanency. Right. And we are seeing that that is shrinking by number of days. I mean, when we were starting this out a couple years ago at St. Joseph's Center, we basically said, look, we could have a person in interim six months to a year. We're seeing people moving through the system sometimes in 60 or 90 days. And sure, the mayor is saying, oh, we want to speed this up. I want to move people much faster and, and we agree and we're working on that but we're already seeing less days from an encampment to permanency than we've seen in the past. That trend is very encouraging. And then there's this notion of how long does it take a person to get from the interim to permanent and really how long when a building goes up and it's got a certificate of occupancy, how long does it take to fill the building? And that's another thing we hear from the mayor and from the board of supervisors that they want us to move uh, much, much faster in this process. And so 
overall, we, we used to see over 365 days you know, over a year. And then we got down to, you know, maybe six months. Um, of late, we've, you know, 120 days. And of late, we've gotten down to about 45 days uh, that it takes from certificate of occupancy to move in. And our goal is to get closer now to 15 to 30 days. And all of that is coming about as a result of many, many teams at the city and county level getting together to say, okay, we need to coordinate. Who should we be focusing on, right? Like together and saying, okay, let's focus on the people who have documents. They're ready to go. So we call this document readiness. Okay, let's focus on that group. They're ready to go, it makes sense. And also we've been talking about a universal application. Wow, people can fill this out online. They don't have to get a ride to a building and stand in line. And all of those are things that will increase access and speed of getting people from interim to permanency. People need three things. They need um, something to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. And in a very odd way, that community is even created on the streets in these encampments because they have you know, relationships, friends, families, animals. How is that psychological human part of this issue being addressed? Because it's not just, I'm gonna put you in a hotel room, I'm gonna put you in an apartment, I'm gonna put you and I might be able to get you a job. Where's, where's that, I'm a person with a needs of a community and needs to know someone cares about me and needs to, you know, raise me up. Well, I agree with the three things you said, and I would say um, connection, purpose, and hope. Got it. And that's why we've always believed that the outreach mechanism, the person that provides outreach to the person uh, on the bench, in the park, in the tent, is so important. Because that human connection, that person saying, I am here, I care about you. And I was talking to a group of folks and they were saying, well, you know, why is it that it seems that sometimes people who are on the streets, they don't want help? And I said, well, have you ever um, had something bad happen and you're with friends or family? And they circle around and what's the first thing we do? We go, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a human instinct. And especially if you've lived your life experiencing trauma or rejection, hurt, pain, poverty, you get really used to going, I'm okay. Or I don't trust you. I don't trust you, I don't want it, etc. And that's why we say in outreach, you keep coming back and you stay consistent because you never know if it's going to be the 20th time or the 55th time that you say, hey, what can I do for you that the person says yes. So we do rebuild connection and community by having that outreach worker. Eventually it becomes the community in the interim housing space or in the permanent housing space is so important. And purpose, as you said, working, giving back, uh, joining the group that's advocating on behalf of people who are unhoused. All of that brings purpose and hope, knowing that the situation they're in is not the end game. It's where they are and it doesn't have to remain that way. And we have to deliver that sense of hope. I think that's why this moment is so important because we all need hope, right? The citizens of LA and, and, and the county of Los Angeles need to know that things are going to get better. There's a new LASA in place uh, to do that. And I think all of that helps us have a sense of hope. We've all, those of us who are in this work have imagined ourselves in a tent you know, and imagine how isolating and lonely that feels. And I think that's why the folks who were able to help are so grateful because they realize that they're not alone. And they realize that there are folks in office, a mayor, a board of supervisors, council members who care, who've dedicated their lives to trying to address this crisis that sense of hope of knowing that they don't have to continue to live in despair is, is so important. Well, thank you so much. It's been a delight to speak with you. Continue the good work and I look forward to having you back where we can talk about all the wonderful changes that have taken place and all the progress that is being made. Thank you so much. Thank you.